Hi friends, I'm Tony of TL Yarn Crafts and welcome to this video tutorial for the Daydream Shawl. The Daydream Shawl is a Tunisian crochet triangle wrap with lots of texture and plenty of fringe. Complete this fun project by using this video along with the full pattern which is available free on my blog tlycblog.com. This is a beginner level pattern, but you will need some basic Tunisian crochet skills. If this is your first time trying Tunisian crochet, click over to my absolute beginner's guide to Tunisian crochet, which is linked in the description. If you're all set to go, grab your hooks and let's get started. For your daydream shawl, you're gonna need 550 yards of worsted weight yarn. For my sample, I use Lion Brand Heartland. It's a gorgeous worsted weight, yarn with a nice kind of tonal nature to it and a really pretty sheen. It comes in 250 yard balls and I used three balls of it. Um, most of the last ball was just used for fringe so if you're not planning to do fringe you could probably get away with using two. If you wanted to switch this yarn out for something else a couple substitutions that I would suggest would be Karen Simply Soft and then also Deborah Norville Everyday both of which are available at Joann's. In addition to your yarn you're going to need an eight millimeter Tunisian crochet hook and I definitely encourage you to get one with a cord because you're going to want a hook with about a 40 inch cord. When it's all said and done, this shawl measures about 65 inches wide and all of those loops will need to be onto your cord. Um, so make sure you have a nice long cord to accommodate all of your loops. We'll start things off with a chain three. There's one, two, and three. Pick up loops in the next two chains. Chain one and do your return pass. For this next row, we're gonna start with a yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch the next stitch, yarn over, and Tunisian simple stitch our final stitch, making sure we work under both loops. Yarn over, pull up the loop, pull through one for our chain, and complete our return pass. For our next row, we're going to yarn over, we're gonna Tunisian simple stitch our yarn over from the previous row, Yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch the next stitch, yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch the following yarn over, and then yarn over and finish our last stitch. Chain one and complete our return pass. So for this row, which is row three, we're going to start with a yarn over and we're going to Tunisian simple stitch the next stitch. We're going to follow that by a yarn over and then we're going to Tunisian simple stitch two stitches together, which is this simple stitch here and this yarn over. So insert under both of those loops, yarn over and pull up the loop. And we're going to follow that with a yarn over. And we're going to do that again and yarn over. Now we're at our last three stitches, which is, which is a simple stitch here, a yarn over and our last stitch. So for our last three stitches, we're going to Simple, yarn over, simple, yarn over, and then do our last stitch and pull up the loop. We now have 13 loops on our hook. So we went from nine stitches to 13. We're going to chain one and do our return pass. So the stitch pattern for this row is to start with a yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch one, and that one will always be the yarn over that is right next to our first stitch. And follow that by a yarn over and then Tunisian simple stitch two together until we get to our last, last three stitches. So simple stitch the next two stitches together, which are a simple and a yarn over. Follow that by a yarn over, simple stitch the next two stitches together, yarn over, and simple stitch the next two stitches together, and yarn over. Simple stitch the next two stitches together, yarn over. So now we're at our last three stitches, which are a simple, a yarn over, and our last stitch. So we're going to simple, yarn over, simple, yarn over, and our last stitch. Always working under those last two loops. Pull up the loop, pull through one, and do our return pass. We'll do that one more time together but that row three is the repeat for the entire rest of the pattern. So again, together, we start with a yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch one, which is this yarn over right here. Yarn over and simple stitch two together. Yarn over, two together. Yarn over, two together. We repeat that until we have three stitches left. 
yarn over and two together. We've got one more set, two together. And now we have our three stitches here. There's one, the yarn over, and then our last stitch. So yarn over, simple stitch the next stitch, yarn over, simple stitch the yarn over, yarn over again, and simple stitch the following stitch, the last stitch. So we're increasing our stitches by four each time, and you can already see that we're getting a nice shallow but wide triangle. We're going to follow that with our chain one and our return pass. So you're going to repeat row three until your top edge measures 65 inches when slightly stretched, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So we're going to continue our project until this top edge measures 65 inches when slightly stretched. And the reason I say slightly stretched is, as you can see already, this project kind of wants to fan out. Ultimately, we're going to block this so this top edge is straight. So when you're doing your measurements, you'll probably want to put a pin here or maybe just something heavy and then stretch out the sides so that you can measure across that top edge so it's nice and straight and you can see when you have 65 inches. So I'm gonna work a few rows off camera just so we can get to the point where I can show you my blocking techniques for this project. Here is my Daydream Shawl Swap. Um, to finish this up, I'm just gonna do a slip stitch bind off. So just a reminder of how that goes, I'm gonna insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through both loops on my hook. And I wanna make sure I do this bind off loosely so I don't have any like puckering or pulling along the top edge of my shawl. And there's my last slip stitch. I'm just going to cut that yarn. And I'm done with the yarn for now. Now we're going to move on to blocking. So for my sample, I'm going to grab a blocking board here. Of course, you're going to need a much larger blocking board um, for your sample. So you'll just want to piece a few pieces together. And then I also have my pins. And I'm going to block this pretty aggressively. Like I said, and as you can see here, this project definitely wants to bow out. This is not the shape that we're wanting to end up with. So I'm going to start by putting a couple pins down here at the bottom to anchor my piece. And then I'm going to grab this side here and lift it up to where I want it to be and put a few pins in that corner. If you have knit blockers, this is a really great project for that because we're going to be kind of pulling and manipulating our project a lot. And now I'm going to grab my other edge and pull that up to where I want it to be. Now I'm going to adjust this edge over here just so I can get this as close to a straight edge up top as possible. And with blocking, there's it's more of an art than a science. So just do whatever you need to do to get these side edges as straight as possible. And now I'm going to grab a few pins and put them along the top. And especially once your shawl is nice and big, you're definitely going to need to put some pins along the top to flatten out this edge here. So I'm just using a few on my sample. And that should be good. At this point, you'll need something that can give you some steam to actually block your project. I have my steamer, which I use for everything, and I'm just going to set it to continuous steam, and I'm going to start steaming down my project. I'm going to pay special attention to the sides here, and you can almost see immediately that they start to relax under the heat of the steam. Paying really close attention to the sides, I'm going to go over them a couple times, and now I'm going to work into the actual body of my shawl working between my pins to really soften up those stitches and get this into a shape that I want. Now I'll go over it a few times because I want to make sure that my sample is nice and damp so that it'll keep this shape and not try to go back to that bowed out shape that we had before. It's really important when you're blocking that you're working with rust proof pins because if you work with pins that can rust, that rust can get onto your blocking mats and even onto your project. Okay, that looks pretty good and this is nice and soaked. So I'm gonna leave this overnight and let this relax and dry completely. Okay, so my sample is nice and dry now. It's dry to the touch. 
So I'm going to start taking my pins out and see what shape we ended up with. It should be exactly what we pinned to the board. The steam makes a huge difference and people wonder if you need to block acrylic or block your projects at all. And my answer is yes, always. It can't hurt. Like, look at that. Compared to what we had before, this looks amazing. So we're gonna take the board away, and at this point, you'll want to weave in your ends, and then we'll get into the fringe. So always with my fringe, I like to go the easy way, and I'll usually use a book. I went for kind of a big book because I wanted some long, dramatic fringe. Um, this book is actually really, really good, and I just keep it in my library, and I use this for fringe a lot. This book is about seven inches long, so I end up with 14 inch lengths of yarn for my fringe. So when I do my fringe, I grab my yarn here, and I always like to work from the outside of the ball rather than the inside, because if you look at the yarn from the inside of the ball, it's very kind of, I don't know, not super pretty, but the yarn from the outside of the ball is a bit more relaxed, so it'll be a lot easier to get some pretty fringe on the outside of our on our project. So I'm just going to start wrapping this yarn around my book. So I'm going to grab my book here and just start wrapping. And you're going to wrap a lot because we're going to use three lengths of yarn per fringe piece. So keep wrapping, wrap to your heart's content. There's no such thing as too much fringe. Keep that up and meet me back here when you're ready to start attaching your fringe to your project. So for the sake of this tutorial, this is enough fringe for now. So I'm just gonna cut off this uh, length that's attached to the yarn ball. And then I'm gonna go into the bottom of my book and cut this yarn as well. I like to use a book that has kind of a hard cover and then the pages are a little bit recessed because it's easier for me to get my scissors in there. And I just cut the yarn completely off. And I have these nice, fairly straight, nice relaxed pieces of fringe. Now I'm going to grab my project, I'm going to grab three lengths of fringe, kind of even them up here, and then with my crochet hook, I'm going to go into the end of my project, and as you can see, we've got these nice little V's here. I inserted fringe in every single one of these V's on my project. It's another way for you to personalize your project, so if you like less fringe, you can go in every other V, or if you don't like fringe at all, you can completely leave it off. So I just insert underneath these two loops. I'm gonna grab my yarn, pull through, and then I'm gonna loop the yarn through those loops and pull gently. Just kind of tighten the knot up there. Again, three lengths of yarn for the way that I did mine. Even them up a little bit, insert your hook, and pull through for your fringe. So you'll want to do that for each V across. You're gonna end up with maybe two or three knots of fringe at the bottom since we started with three stitches and then head up the other end of your shawl. When you're ready, you can steam this down with your iron or with your steamer just to relax the fringe and make it nice and pretty and flowy. And then I also went through and kind of cut the fringe even. And once you do that, your daydream shawl will be all done. Thanks so much for joining me to make the daydream shawl. Click over to my blog for more details on this project and be sure to share your progress with me on Instagram by using hashtag daydream shawl. Until next time, I'm Tony of TL Yarn Crafts.